take a look at the rain that's currently coming down. We do have it in Puerto Rico, so some good news there. Uh, we are wanting this rainfall. We've got it. This is the remnants of Danny leaving that behind. So a little bit of that. Uh, you'll notice that we actually had this kind of pulse of energy increase here over Puerto Rico. So this is exactly the scenario that we wanted to play out to help with the drought. We wanted some rainfall. No worries, though, on Danny. This is not going to reform. This is not going to be an issue for us. But what about this? Looking right on the heels of Danny, we have our next tropical storm. Erica, if you were with us this time yesterday morning, we were saying, hey, there's a chance that we could have Erica by this time tomorrow, and we do. Once again, take a look at this. We've got this going on. Uh, you can see the uh, pulse of convection, maybe not right where the center is, a little bit on the north side there and uh, on the east side of the system. It's important to note that we're, we're this is a radar estimate that we're looking at here. You know, a satellite estimate of 45 mile an hour sustained winds. Not looking as great this morning. A little bit of wind shear actually back here on the uh, southeast side and that's pulling some of these clouds back off and we also have this uh, southwest shear that's just coming in and and shearing it apart just a little bit but not enough to inhibit any development right now it looks as though Erica is going to have slow but steady development over the next couple of days which is why Antigua Barbuda and Bar Barbuda St. Kitts and uh, Gi and Gi Anguilla. I always say Anguilla. Is it Anguilla? Anguilla? Anguilla. Okay. Anguilla. I think it's Anguilla. See, Jen is the is the Caribbean expert. She loves to travel there, so <laughs> she's my my expert. Just the beach here. bum. <laughs> there are those tropical storm watches in place, and you can see why. Take a look at this. This is the shear I was talking about. See that shear? It's actually pulling a couple of these clouds that direction, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you'll notice the shear is pretty weak. It's just mod light to moderate out ahead of this system as it moves to the west. So as Erica tracks to the west, it isn't going to encounter any really huge roadblocks, although it's going to be a slow but steady intensification that's anticipated. So I know that everyone in South Florida from Palm Beach County, Broward and down into Miami Dade, this is putting fear into your hearts right now. I know how this feels. I know what it's like. And I have to tell you, there is a lot of uncertainty beyond Friday. So take all of this part of the forecast with a grain of salt. We're going to discuss why there are some changes that might diverge that path in the coming days and why it's a little uncertain at that point. So yeah, we've got to get that a little farther east in order to clear by Boston. Boston definitely not unclear just yet. You're cloudy uh, through your lunch hour and then into the early afternoon. But this evening, whenever you're heading out to dinner or getting the kids out to their evening activities before they go back to school, you could be looking at some thunderstorms. So you've got to pay attention to the radar. I know it looks nice right now. Nothing on it, right? Nothing on the radar. But look what's coming. Check out what's happening just here north. Across Vermont, New Hampshire, we've got a swath of some pretty heavy rainfall at times. Uh, light to moderate widespread. But look at these just outside of Keen. Woo! Those are some heavy downpours and you'll notice it's kind of trailing off here back toward Hartford. That's the front and it's already clear in Albany. So great news there. You're going to start to dry out with those dew points. You're going to feel that change. The wind should be changing any minute there. This is a look at the winds. You can see how they're out of the west back behind the front out ahead of it still out of the south and just pumping in that moisture. That's going to be what feeds these thunderstorms with along that front. So watch this as they form out of the south and move north and just kind of travel along that front. Eventually Eventually you clear out in Boston by 11 o'clock tonight, but uh, Jen, Maine, not getting out of it just yet. No, but by the end of the week, we promise yeah. we'll get some better weather there. <laughs> Plus coming up, we've got more in Tropical Storm Erica and its future. Yeah. All right, Kate, so uh, now we've got two systems actually to watch yeah. over there too. Not close, but so it was still to watch. Yeah, this is the look at the radar right now. Uh, like we were talking about, we did see a lot of rain, especially on the south side of Kauai. Um, you get up to the north side, there's that terrific hiking trail along the Nepali coast, but you can't do it at all, even if you get a little bit of rain. So uh, if you've seen Jurassic Park, those opening shots were filmed right here and uh, you can't get a clear view today. So if you have know anybody on those uh, little boating tours that go up to see the Nepali coast, you're not going to get that either. OK, this is what goes on in the wider view. This is what's happening. Look at how much this pulse of moisture and energy has diminished, but we're still watching Kilo and we're still watching Loke. These are both systems in the Central Pacific that are just kind of hanging out here. But what happens with them? That's the big question. Take a look at Kilo, still a tropical depression. This one just has been difficult 
So to, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. To a difficult system, uh, slow strengthening to maybe by Saturday, 65 mile an hour tropical storm. It was at one point forecast to be a category five hurricane. Mm -hmm. So that one has been a difficult forecast. Fortunately, moving away from land, not going to affect anywhere. And neither is Loke, but seeing it go up north into the northern latitudes, it makes me wonder if that could have an impact on our forecast down the street. Well, speaking of patterns, we're going to go inside weather on a big pattern change coming our way with time. That would be more on the uh, 7 p.m. scale. Yes. yes. <laughs> At scale. Schedule. That's the schedule. schedule. <laughs> All right, speaking of scale. That's we, what I, I got the, that in my head. We have the new advisory. The 11 o'clock advisory is in for Tropical Storm Erica. Um, so the latest is no change. Wind still at 45 miles per hour. The pressure is still the same. The movement is still the same. And you notice visually nothing has changed in the last uh, three hours. This is really significant, this 20 mile an hour movement. I think that that's going to have a big role in our forecast going forward. So we'll see if we're able to sustain that forward motion. All right. So at this point, in terms of making the assessment of how strong it is, um, there's a buoy or two out here that we've got mm -hmm. some observations from. But for the most part, it's based on satellite and it's an estimate using the Dvorak scale. So we thought we'd just take a moment and tell you what the Dvorak scale is. It really allows uh, the forecasters to determine the location of the center and the strength based on two different ways of estimating and comparing to past satellite presentations. Yeah, you also have to look at the, you know, the length of time. What has the change been over time? Is this an intensifying? Is mm -hmm. this a weakening system? These are all things that play into it. Uh, but it's it's also done on a scale. Uh, you've got a point system that are assigned to the satellite features that you're finding when you're looking at so it. So it's as subjective as possible. And you know, it's, or it's still, I mean, objective as possible. It's still very subjective, but right. it's as objective as possible. Um, See, so given something like this, mm -hmm. and we can't certainly give you every uh, example, but something like this, right? You know, you take a look at other examples of what systems have looked like and compare it. And the 1003 uh, millibars, it would be like a 2.5 to a three somewhere right. in this range that that's estimated but you're right I mean hitting one of those buoys is like finding a needle in a haystack right, that's why right. we need the hurricane hunters to sample the actual environment and say what exactly is going on so NOAA will be sending an aircraft in later today um, to sample the environment which is very important too so that the models have a better uh, indication of what's happening in the environment that this will be moving into that's their Gulf Stream 4 will be going into the environment this afternoon usually after the hurricane hunters fly we get a much better idea with our computer models once we get that data mm -hmm. and can put it in and say this is where the center is these are the conditions and so um, this track has a lot of uncertainty toward the mm -hmm. end of it because we haven't sampled the air and there's a lot of changes that could happen past Friday and I think confidence is very low past Friday as to the path and honestly intensity too and probably even more so with intensity you know some of the models take this eastern track some of the models take more in the center and some of the models one model in particular takes it out actually towards the Gulf of Mexico as a very weak system um, right. But nonetheless, big range of possibilities. And it all has to do with what's happening in our atmosphere, right? It's it's not just the wind shear. This wind shear, not going to be too much of a problem for some slow intensification. Pretty much all agreement good with that over the next couple of days. But then we sort of diverge at this mm -hmm. point, and it has a lot to do with this. Look at this. This is the trough. Mm -hmm. See those winds there? That's going to be playing a huge role in this, this goes out to sea or what direction it goes, what happens? It, it's all about the steering flow. It's all about, you know, dry air that's out there that gets into it. Um, and, you know, in terms of organization, how, how much it strengthens, right, in, right. The, in the near term. So this trough is going to be a, a big player as we get later into the forecast period. These are the two models that we often talk about, especially with systems back over the U.S. We talk about the GFS, the American model, and the European, and they have two very different solutions right now. Right. This is for Sunday. And then look at Monday. Two very mm -hmm. different solutions once again. Tuesday, yeah. incredibly different. So this is why you take it with a grain of salt at this point. Mm -hmm. And a lot of tweets yeah. going out showing this solution, but. And there's a couple more models that have an even more eastward solution too. So there, there's a lot of possibilities. We'll keep breaking down what some of the options are when we.